everybody. So I wanted to go through perms and relaxers with you all because last week I had released, or maybe it was earlier this week, I had released um, a hair color, a chemistry of hair color video, and it seemed to help a lot of people. So today we're going to go through perms and relaxers, the difference between them, how it all works, all that jazz. So um, thank you for spending a quick 15 minutes with me, maybe 20, depends on how quickly I talk. But uh, we're going to get through this and hopefully it's going to give you some insight as to how the chemistry works behind these two services, all right? So let's get to it. Um, the first thing is, who am I? So my name is Teresa Newley. I am an education consultant. Uh, I have about 15 years of cosmetology teaching experience, about 22 years in the actual industry, though. I have worked for all of the major brands. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say all, but Matrix and Redken and Pivot Point and all sorts of them. Um, and I'm pretty strong in my chemistry background. So it's my favorite stuff to teach. It's my favorite thing to talk about. I'm a hairstylist. I'm a school leader. I'm a consultant. I'm a teacher. I am a student uh, at the University of Florida, so I, I understand what you all go through every single day. And most of all, I'm just a big old science nerd. I really, really love science. And so I love these kinds of platforms that I get to talk about it with you and really share some of my information with you. Okay. So today we're going to learn first about the chemical process of a perm, what's actually happening when we perm hair. Then we're gonna talk about the process of a relaxer because while it's similar, it is not actually the same thing, okay? We're gonna talk about how they're alike, and then of course we're gonna talk about how they are different because we're using or we're manipulating the same bonds, but it's not exactly the same process. And then we're gonna talk about why this matters to you because I think it's important that in any type of trade school environment, we are teaching you things that you actually have to know, not just to pass your state board, but to actually use in the industry. So we're gonna talk about why this is so important, okay? So let's start with that. Why does it actually matter, okay? These two chemical reactions deal with the same proteins they behave differently. We have to understand why they behave differently, okay? So effectively to manipulate the hair without breaking it off, which I know a lot of styles that do, um, we have to know what we're doing inside of it. So that's why this is so important. And then remember, I'm gonna be on a state board. I don't care what state you're in. I don't care if you are in Texas or Florida or Illinois, this is going to be on a state board for you. So please understand it. Um, and even that, I know too many stylists that don't really understand what they're doing inside that hair strand. And so knowing that will help you prevent from breaking hair. Okay, so let's get going. Both of these processes deal with a keratin protein. Okay, so this might look a little familiar to you. There's going to be some types of illustration of this in your textbook of some sort, um, but this is my own makeshift graphic design work, which I am no good at. So let's be clear, these are not like professional images, okay? So your keratin protein or your hair is made up of amino acids. There are 19 different amino acids. Um, we're not going to go through all of those for time's sake, but if you're really interested, do some research. But your hair protein is made of amino acids. The amino acids are are actually connected by something called a peptide bond, okay? Peptide bond is also known as an end bond. Um, and each row of those, so you have a top row and have a bottom row, is called a polypeptide chain. Well, that's because there's many peptides. Poly means many. When we think of polygamy, right, we think of many wives. Well, um, polypeptide means many peptide bonds. So two polypeptide chains line up with each other and they start to create this keratin protein. Okay, so again, the peptide bond, also known as an end bond, because it's connecting the end of one amino acid to the end of the other amino acid. All right, those two polypeptide chains are actually connected by side bonds, because again, they're connecting side to side the two polypeptide chains. Three different types of side bonds. First is hydrogen, okay? So a hydrogen bond um, accounts for about a third of the hair strength. It's kind of a weak bond because we break it literally every time we put any kind of heat on the hair, we've broken that hair, okay? So heat or water is gonna break it. We break it every time we wash our hair, and then when we blow dry it into a new shape, we reform it. It's that simple, okay? So a hydrogen bond, tons of them, um, and they're going to provide a third of the hair strength. Then we have a salt bond, okay? Salt bond, also a weak bond, also accounting for a third of the hair strength in it, again, because there's so many. So a salt bond connects, or sorry, is broken by a change in pH. So every time we wet the hair down, we change the pH of the hair. 
Why is that? The hair is at a pH of about 4.5 to 5.5. Water is at a 7. Shampoos can be anywhere from really to 6.5 to a 7.5 sometimes. So the reality, sometimes higher than that. So the reality of it is every time we wash the hair, we break the salt bonds. Okay. So again, and when we shampoo, condition, and blow dry, we've, we've already broken and reformed those two bonds, right? So that's common. The third bond is what we really are dealing with in all of these chemical process services, okay? And it's a disulfide bond, okay? A disulfide bond can only be broken with chemicals. It is not going to break on its own. A disulfide bond is created because of the, of the addition of a sulfur atom attached to some of the amino acids, right? Disulfide means two sulfurs. When we dissect something, we cut it in two. Okay. So um, a disulfide bond is going to have amino acids that are connected by sulfur with sulfur attached to them. That's what makes it a disulfide bond. This is the important bond that we break. Okay. Yes, again, my graphic design work is fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna go through the reduction process really quickly. Don't worry if you don't get it this first explanation. I kind of displayed it in all of the steps that happened, but then we're gonna go back through it with this keratin protein again and kind of walk through it again. So um, I'm gonna go through it a couple different ways, so hopefully one of those ways will stick for you, okay? So the reduction process, this is how we perm hair. First, we break salt and hydrogen bonds. Very easy, we wet the hair down, we've broken it, okay? Then we have to add hydrogen into the hair in some way. This is in your perm solution. This is that ingredient that you hate the word, but you have to know for a state board called ammonium thioglycolate. Okay, that's where you find your hydrogen, all right? Ammonia lifts open the cuticle, just like it does in hair color. The thioglycolate actually introduces the hydrogen. So what hydrogen does is it actually pulls away that sulfur that we talked about. Remember, some of those amino acids had sulfur attached to them, so it made them a disulfide bond. Well, the hydrogen goes in and really likes those sulfur atoms, so sulfur kind of like ditches disulfide and goes with the hydrogen and kind of just, you know, goes for a little vacation, basically. Well, without the disulfide there, or sorry, without the sulfur there, disulfide breaks. There's nothing holding it together. There's no reason for it to be there without those sulfur atoms, okay? So disulfide breaks, and now you have all three bonds broken. So now you can actually reshape the hair into a new process, right? So again, now we process the hair into this new shape. So once we've done that, we've put the solution on, we've let it sit, we've checked for that S curl, right? Every, that's just unfamiliar to everybody, and we're, we're seeing a nice strong wave pattern in the hair. We now have to kind of reform it, reform it into its new position, and the way we do that is we add oxygen into the hair. This is in your neutralizer. The main ingredient in perm neutralizer is hydrogen peroxide, okay? So we gotta add oxygen into the hair, which actually pulls the hydrogen back out of the hair. So how does that happen? Well, think about it. You've got these two hydrogen atoms that have attached themselves to the two sulfur atoms, and then we put oxygen into the hair. Well, what happens is that oxygen attracts those two hydrogen atoms and creates an H2O molecule. What is H2O, my friend? H2O, my friends, it is water, right? So those molecules all join together, and the actual molecules wash out of the hair as a water molecule, okay? So with nothing else to do, sulfur goes back to those amino acids and disulfide rejoins itself. Now, when I teach this in schools, I have a whole story that goes along with it about Donny disulfide and the sulfur sisters and hairy hydrogen. And any of my students watching this are gonna be like, oh my gosh, we totally know about that. She made me write a play about it. I absolutely did, okay? So the thing about disulfide bonds is it's just like a bad breakup that gets back together, right? When you and somebody break up, and then you get back together afterwards, especially if one of you has cheated, you're back together, but you're never quite as strong, okay? So it's the same thing here. So while disulfide broke up, and sulfur broke up, you know, into pieces, when they got back together, they're there, but they're not as strong as they used to be, okay? So that's important to remember, because when we know that we're breaking these disulfide bonds in the hair, and we continue to put chemicals on top of that, we have to understand that it's already fragile. It's not in the best shape that it could be. So we have to be really careful. All right, so let's go through it again, but this time with the keratin protein in front of us, okay? So the first thing we did was we actually got rid of the hydrogen and the salt molecule or um, bonds, which were those side bonds, um, when we wet the hair down. So all we had to do was wet the hair and those two have broken, okay? So now we have to get rid of the sulfur, all right? So the way we're gonna get rid of the sulfur is we are going to add in hydrogen atoms, right? So the hydrogen atoms are gonna come and they're gonna collect the sulfur that comes in the ammonium thioglycolate. That gets rid of our disulfide for us, right? 
we've let it process, we found the S curl, we're happy with it, we gotta put it all back together now, okay? So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce that oxygen into the hair, and the oxygen is gonna pull that hydrogen back, which eventually is going to allow us, and all of these bonds, these might not be in order, to repair themselves, okay? So think about that. Once hydrogen goes, everything starts to shift back into place and our bonds find home again, all right? So you can see, it's not that it's a difficult process, but you do have to understand a couple key things about this, right? Reduction happens when we introduce hydrogen into the hair, the hydrogen pulls away the sulfur atoms, disulfide breaks, and now we can reshape things. Oxidation is when we reharden that hair, we put the bonds back together. Oxidation involves giving oxygen, right? Oxidation, oxygen. We put oxygen into the hair, which collects the hydrogen, makes a water molecule, and says bye-bye, and leaves that hair, okay? So now the disulfide bond goes back together, all right? Does that make any sense? So, Again, you can watch this a couple times. If you have questions, please reach out to me. I am I will always answer comments and questions and anything you have um, to the best of my ability. I do have a pretty strong background in science, and if I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you. Okay, so that's the perm process. So how are relaxers a little bit different? We're still breaking the bonds, including the disulfide bonds, but now we're using a process called lanthionization. So forget reduction. Forget oxidation, now we're doing lanthionization. So lanthionization involves removing that sulfur atom just like we did in the reduction process, but in a very different way, okay? So lanthionization occurs because of a change in pH. So think about it, what is the pH of a relaxer, okay? So your textbook will say anywhere from 11 to 14. All right, the real answer is it's usually about a 13 or 14. A relaxer has a very, very high pH. Remember, the pH scale only goes to 14, all right? So the leap in pH from a 4.5 to 5.5 all the way to a 13 or 14 literally causes an earthquake in the hair. Hmm? So that, that little picture right there, absolutely. That's what's happening. We're literally shaking the hair so hard that a sulfur atom actually falls off that amino acid right? So it's a little more dramatic. <laughs> it's a little more catastrophic to the hair, which is why it's a little, a little, a lot more damaging. Um, but you need that strong chemical to break that strong, strong ethnic hair, okay? So what we've done is I probably should have fixed this. This creates a lanthionine bond for us, all right? So we no longer have a, a, a disulfide bond that actually turned into a lanthionine bond because now we actually lose a sulfur atom. One of them goes away. Bye, it's gone, okay? So important to remember that we, it's not that we remove all the sulfur. We start knocking them off little by little from that earthquake. Okay. So you can see the lanthionine bond, actually the disulfide bond goes away and it becomes lanthionine from there. Do you see the difference? It's only got the one sulfur atom, not two sulfur atoms. All right, so we've broken the bond through the lanthionization process. The lanthionization was simply because of a change in pH, right? So we shook that sulfur atom off. So how do we put this all back together? We don't. Let that sink in. We don't. In the world of relaxers, we let the hair remain broken. Okay, all right. So let's talk about what that really looks like, right? So you're probably saying to me, well, Teresa, we put neutralizing shampoo. Nope, we put normalizing shampoo on it. It's not usually neutralizing, it can be, but it's usually normalizing shampoo. And no matter what it is, all it's really trying to do is bring the pH back down closer to normal so that the hair doesn't continue to break. Okay, so let's go through this with ladders, all right? So this is a representation of your keratin protein, right? Your first ladder. You put your first relaxer on it, and you've probably broken a couple of those disulfide bonds. You know, we, we may have some lanthionine bonds in there now, but we don't break everything. We just break some of them with that first relaxer, enough to get the hair about 80% straight. If you remove more than 80% of the curl, chances are you're breaking it off the head. Okay, so you're never going to get 100% straight hair with a relaxer. If you do, it might be straight, but it's also probably going to be on the floor for you, okay? So that's your first relaxer. You have that ladder, right? So then you do a second relaxer and you think, you know what, I'm gonna overlap it, or you're sloppy, or you're fresh for time, you just throw it on there, um, or maybe you're not quite sure what you're doing. So you have that second relaxer, and then you wipe out a couple more of your disulfide bonds. All right, so you can still get up that ladder, that protein, 
still has a little integrity left to it, but it doesn't seem like a very strong or safe ladder to climb to me. I mean, I'm, I'm no expert, I don't think, but well, you know, you can see, judge for yourself. All right, so the third relaxer, right? This is what we started with. You once again aren't paying attention or your client says to you, oh, it's just not straight enough. So you decide you're gonna overlap for a third time. Well, what did we just do? We took out the remaining disulfide bonds. That hair is no longer on the head. So if you see relaxed your clients and they're missing patches of hair, it typically comes from actually overlapping that relaxer over and over again. A lot of people ask, is it safe to put color or lightener on relaxed hair? It can be. Um, if you're very, very careful with permanent color, you can use a 10 or 20 volume. Remember, the hydrogen peroxide in your developer is what's going to create that chaos for you. Um, but I will tell you that hydrogen peroxide is not just going to target melanin. It's going to target everything in its path. So if you have a really weak keratin protein and you are missing a third of your disulfide bonds and then you throw a lightener on there, you're probably going to be wrecking your peptide bonds, everything you can. So that's why we really, really say you probably should not do that. Okay. So a quick recap about what we just talked about. Um, both perms and relaxers are achieved through the breaking of the disulfide bond, right? Perms use hydrogen found in ammonium thioglycolate to pull away the sulfur and break the bond. Relaxers use a drastic change in pH to knock the sulfur atom off. The perm processes are reduction, which is breaking it, we're reducing it into pieces, and oxidation, which puts it all back together. It's like the glue. Relaxers use a process called anthionization, which is that drastic change in the pH, which just shakes the sulfur atom off, okay? In the perm process, we do rebuild that disulfide bond, but in the relaxer process, we do not, okay? We just let it stay broken. Okay, so that's what I have for you. Hopefully that helped. Uh, if you liked this video, please, please, please follow me on YouTube, right? Just go ahead and hit, you know, follow or subscribe or whatever that thing is. Um, find me on my social media. While most of what I talk about is education-based, uh, I'm happy to create videos for just about anything. These have been helpful, so I'm probably gonna create some more. If you have any topics you wanna hear about, please let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much uh, for watching. I appreciate it. Share, 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 and hope it helped. Have a great one, guys.